And the other part to that is why would men tolerate that? Why aren't men aware of this situation or more men aware of it? Well, here lies the tragedy. And 30 years ago, I was trying to talk to men and warning them and saying to them, if you do not watch out, this politically ideology, this whole concept of radical feminism will spread and you will lose your homes, your incomes and your families and your children. And they laughed because as far as men are concerned, they didn't take responsibility for relationships. What's going on here? We thought men thought this was equality, so they sat back and, and let it all happen and then suddenly realised that they were being shafted. And to this day they still don't. Men who personally suffer a loss uh, because they have become divorced from a virulent wife who's made it their, her business to see that he never sees his children, they get involved, usually for a short period of time, and they move on. The tragedy is that fathers' movements right the way across the world have never managed to establish themselves as a coherent, powerful source of opposition. Unlike the feminist movement, women are far better than men in networking and organising and working with each other, particularly over emotional issues. Men are afraid in the dark ages when it comes to this. The destruction of family led by feminists is like a scorched earth policy. Women won't be able to go back from feminism even if they wanted to. The concept of family has been so thoroughly wrecked, they won't know what it is. When children run amok, joining gangs, being violent, committing crime, and generally being antisocial, this strengthens government. They can use the inexplicable problem of wild children to further attack family, create more police officers, increase taxation, and draft new laws to increase their power in society. So these young lads are just, you know, they're getting out of control, and I just went... Probably not so bad round here because we live in a rural sort of area, but in the inner city parts of London and places like that, um, I cannot imagine what these young men are behaving like now. You just got a, you've got an increasingly violent society. Uh, you've got no respect at all, as I say, as I see it, between young men and young women. And I saw all that happening in the 80s and 90s. There's definitely a breakdown in family. The number of divorces is highest I think it's ever been. The number of children on the streets, children without fathers, are growing up in an environment where they really have to cater for themselves. They're supposed to receive guidance from uh, their parents is um, causing untold harm to children and to adults. And it has broken down as a result of the ideology that has been inflicted upon us and as a result of the demonization of the family through the feminist movement. Discipline in the home provided by fathers leads directly to less powerful government, fewer jobs in the police and prison industry and less income for money-making businesses like the NSPCC. My problem with this is that you're putting people in the States more for the rest of their life. You're putting them in the system like criminals. And everything we've talked about are systems of the state. You know, there's, there's this, then you have to report to judges who can then call you in and have you referred, and then there's welfare officers and mediators examining you to find you wired, that sort of person. It's very Orwellian, and the endless interference because you've just broken up with your missus. Fuck off. Get out of my life. You know, that's it. And save yourself a few quid in the bargain, the state. You know, I, I generally, what's the problem? The problem is that the government doesn't want to fuck off. It wants people in the system. It needs people in the system. It needs as many people in the system as possible because it justifies their existence and increases their authority. It's about the law being able to, the law by recognising what's going on can then intervene more directly in people's private lives. It puts people within the remit of law and then they can be controlled again. This is why government will frequently deny their own research and claim that fathers are not that important to upbringing and indeed are often detrimental to the child. Do you think that there's any discrimination against two-parent families in our society today? Yes, I do. I think, I think there's a very interesting... Um, paper was written by Harriet Harman, Patricia Hewitt and Anna Coote in 1990. It was a policy paper for the Labour Party. And one of the remarks that was made uh, with the three women was saying that men weren't necessarily harmonious in family life. And those women are now in positions of great power. I just find it amazing that someone can be in a position like that with the stated opinions that she has. No, she's, not even she's there for a perfectly good reason to continue with her stated opinions. Ultimately, I mean, this is, this is my political thinking. Ultimately, if a government 
eradicates the male voice, men's voices they can control. And if society is largely created around women and children, then it's a very easy society to run. Men are mavericks, men are a nuisance. One father, one mother under one roof with its biological children. That's no longer supported. Something is going on with family life in Western society. Many men are not with mother and child. The question is, why is this happening? What artificial set of circumstances is now driving many men away from family relationships? The pressures are manyfold. Men are presented as being worthless in popular media. A long time ago, I asked God to send me a decent man. I got Robert, Cedric, Daryl, and Kenneth. God's got some serious explaining to do. There are no good men. Now, now I, I read this article, and on average, there are two per state. The role of men in families has been systematically attacked, with fathers presented as unnecessary and even dangerous around their own wives and children. What are we going to do? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, guys like you always say you don't know what you're going to do until you do it. I think you know exactly what you were going to do. You were going to kill your wife and child. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, my one. I give you my word. My wife and son will be dead by the end of this day. Men and women have been artificially put in competition with each other. Our biological programming as humans is quite simple in this respect. Women want to be with men that they can look up to, depend on and admire. Men want to be with women who are supportive and feminine. Men do not want to compete with women. We were just, what was it, we were just sitting at a table in, in a bar and some guy had his chair out too far so it was squashing into her. <laughs> she and she completely flew off the handle. It, it, was, it was unwarranted. She turned around and swore at him. I said, can you move your blasted fucking chair? <laughs> it's like, right, this is not an attractive thing. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not feeling it right now. Um, so yeah, that kind of, that kind of, and I guess, kind of, I guess that's kind of that kind of masculinity around a woman is unattractive. Yeah, but what would happen if that guy turned around and wanted well, of course to he's going to start with me. Yeah. So he's not going to slap her. She's, she's a woman. He's going to start with me. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Actually, no, she probably would have taken it. The fundamental fact of life is that women are not the opposite sex. They're the complementary sex. But government and business have convinced women that they should be competing with men. And we all suffer for it. They prefer men who have more status and resources than they do. Once upon a, once upon a time, this was thought that the only reason women go for men with, with money is because, for various reasons, women don't have money of their own, so they were, kind of, they were forced to. Um, but it turns out that even, as, even when women are financially independent, they're still, they're still looking for males who have more money than they do. So if you start with the basic expectation that, that women are, uh, would like to marry up, they're looking for, uh, looking for men with status and resources. If there's, a <coughs> if there's a background economic change such that it shifts the relative positions of men and women, then all of a sudden the, all the women that are sort of looking up for a, their preferred partner, just, all of a sudden there's fewer, less of them to go around. You might expect that um, men with no with less resources would prefer women with resources. Um, but not only are those women not interested in men like that, but the men aren't interested in women like that either. As discrimination against men leads to more and more women earning more than men, being more highly qualified than men, and competing for the same jobs as men, the pool of available eligible men shrinks. Feminism has only succeeded in reducing women's options and making them unhappy in their lives. Women want to have children, but they don't want to be with the fathers. This is bad for everyone except social services.